Travis Wayne Goodson. Uh, it's time I hit the church hard and fast with the symbol of the inverted pentagram associated with Lucifer. I was going to do that one a week ago or so, and uh, never got to it. Filed it away so I didn't see it in my notebook, which I replaced my post-it notes with. And so then I decided to Google today, just now, uh, how many temples have the inverted pentagram. And came across a Mormon apologetic site that pissed me off. <laughs> Those guys are dumb, and they play Mormons for dumb. Let me explain. Let's see, which brings it up, and ldsanswers.org. It's a blog site. He got a video, Satanists and the Occult, Desecrate Holy Symbols. <laughs> oh dear God. Yes, this is Mormon apologist defending the symbol of Lucifer. I mean, we're talking scary bloop. And so, I'm going to read what they have, so that there can be no confusion that I'm adding to or taking away from anything they're saying, but I'll add commentary. Latter-day Saints are often accused of satanic worship because of the Logan, Salt Lake, and Nauvoo temples feature, feature inverted pentagrams on the exterior surface. There are, so that answers my question that I was searching for, Logan, Salt Lake, Nauvoo. And notice, Logan and Salt Lake, Joseph Smith? No. Remember, he's been murdered. It's Brigham Young. Nauvoo? Joseph? Nope, he's dead. Brigham Young. So remember that as I read on. All the signs with the inverted pentagram on temples are from Brigham Young. Pay attention. There are 40 on the Salt Lake Temple alone. Huh, that's how many years it took to build. <laughs> and I make a reference to 40 in my uh, um, series number 5, part 5, uh, on Samson. Uh, don't ask me where it is. Those were long videos. <laughs> Each of the circular windows surrounding the Nauvoo Temple depict an inverted pentagram surrounded by three stones at each of the four cardinal directions. Why? Here, pay attention. Remember, Brigham Young. Why would Joseph Smith the prophet of the restoration. See how they're wording that? These are Mormons defending the church and they divert away from Brigham Young and go right to Joseph. Why would Joseph do that? He's the prophet of the restoration. Place an inverted pentagram on one of the most important early temples. Really? Kirland? No. So, Joseph Smith. You see, they've already messed up church history to defend the church. This is why Mormon apologists are the most evil of defenders that ever have existed on the face of the earth. Do not see this. Do not see why this angered me. I'm Mormon, born and raised 50 years. I know better. You don't lie, deceive, pacify, flatter, and get angry at other people by calling them names, ad hominem, to defend the church. That's not Christ-like. 
these guys who did ldsanswers.org are lying, deceiving, and covering up church history to protect the church. Gee, I wonder where they got that example from. Could it be the church leaders? Yes. That's why I had to explain it, because you wouldn't have gotten the answer otherwise. <clears throat> so Joseph Smith had nothing to do with the inverted pentagram. And so then they go off onto their forbidden paths of darkness towards the great and spacious building of the Mormon church. Discovered in ancient Babylon and around the world. Pay attention here. We're talking about the inverted pentagram. Why would the temples depict an inverted pentagram? Discovered in ancient Babylon and around the world, the pentagram. See what they're doing now? They've diverted away from Brigham Young, going to Joseph Smith. Now they're diverting from the inverted pentagram to the pentagram. Now you can understand why their video is titled, Satanists and the Occult Desecrate Holy Symbols. This is the diversionary tactic of apologists in the Mormon Church. The pentagram is one of the oldest symbols in history. For centuries, it was a symbol of light, creation, and healing. Um, star. <laughs> I just, I just, you just want to throw your hands up and go, oh my god. These guys are defending the church? <laughs> go back to your day jobs, guys. Oh dear God! <sighs> the symbol was hijacked. What symbol? The last symbol you were talking about was the pentagram. <laughs> the pentagram was hijacked? How was it hijacked? <laughs> In modern times. Modern? How modern? Because the symbol of the inverted pentagram associated with Lucifer goes way back. And we'll get to that. But they claim it's by a French Catholic deacon, Alphonse Louis Constant, also known as Eliphas Levi. Uh, see, they don't give a date. When? Who was he? Was he? When was he? They have a photograph of him, so it, it is somewhat modern in that sense, since the days of photography. Uh, in the mid 1800s was it because I don't think it was the early 1800s um, but uh, let's so now we've got to type in Alphonse Louis Constant Alphonse Louis Constant there he is uh, da -da. oh he's got a Jewish symbol oh there's the pentagram for the tetragram, and they talk about that. 1875. Oh, dear God. <laughs> That's when he died. He was born in 1810. So give him 30 years to be the one to invent the inverted pentagram and twist it. Uh, so 1840. So after, or right around the time Joseph Smith died. That's what they're trying to claim, is that Joseph Smith died and the Church of Lucifer stood strong. <laughs> oh dear God. No, it was before this. And so now they go on to uh, say he was involved in magic and the occult. Well, I saw the other pictures with him. He was involved in Jewish mysticism. Which is, or, well, yeah, there's also a Christian mysticism, uh, and since he's a French Catholic, uh, I would assume, therefore, he would be a Catholic mystic, a Catholic mystic. Yeah, I'm not seeing Lucifer symbols with the pictures of him, 
uh, was a French occult author. So they do accuse him of the occult for Luciferianism. Uh, the name under which he published his books was an attempt to translate or transliterate his given names, Alphonse Louis, Eliphas Levi, into Hebrew language, uh, Phileas Evil. Okay, so I can understand what they're thinking here is that they're making an assumption that this guy started the evil church. Uh, the Communist Manifesto was written during, uh, it, let's, oops, Communist Manifesto, that was written 1848, and so there was the, the government and the economy of evil, as understood, but the practice was already previously known about and practiced. It was uh, Karl Marx who published the book that got the credibility for it. So this Elephant's Evil uh, is uh, one attributed to it. Uh, first to declare, no, he was not <laughs> the inverted pentagram as a symbol of evil. And we're going to get to that. Uh, change his name to the Hebrew, so, yeah, they're, yeah. So he's purposely throwing in Hebrew to turn Hebrew into evil. Uh, use the pentagram, well, that's not evil, you gotta invert it, in connection with the tetragrammation. Uh, that's the Jewish mystical practice to create a symbol blaspheming the sacred name of God. The tetragrammation in four letters, tetragrammation is referenced in the da, 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 da. According to Jewish practice, so they, they clearly don't know this guy. I bet they haven't even read his books. Alright. So I'm not going to go into commentary on explain, re correcting everything they're going off on the rabbit hole. They want me to go down their rabbit hole. And so we would get into an argument about whether Eliphaz is the originator of evil. That's how they work. And I'm not going to fall for that game. Uh, let's see. One researcher completed a little survey. Oh my god. No, don't fall for surveys. Have you heard of a small sampling fallacy? It's where you take a sample poll of a small percentage of the greater population and claim that the greater population is based upon the small sample. You can't do that. But you hear it all the time on the news whether it's Fox, MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, they all make this fallacy when they announce as news, polls indicate positive or negative for Trump. It doesn't matter. It's all fallacy. <laughs> because it's a small sampling. They don't talk to all three... 130 million of us. And I caught one of them one time showing in small print 1,000 people surveyed. What's the percentage of 1,000 out of 330 million? Exactly. Those 1,000 have never spoken for me. And that's why I, I turn down the volume or shut off the TV altogether when MSNBC has their news coverage of a poll number that came out. They're purposely doing that so that they can influence the majority of people with the small sampling. And in some cases, yeah, it's a good thing, but it's still wrong to do it. It's a fallacy argument. 
And so here they are pulling the survey thing. Okay, and then he says this counterfeit use. See, they're using words to dismiss the symbolism that was intended from the Bible. Ooh, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, historic symbol of light is actually a symbol of darkness. <sighs> they're not even bringing up, nope, they aren't. They're not bringing up Isaiah 14, verse 12. Dear God. <laughs> and keep their journal histories. Satanists are just like us. <laughs> That's not something you want to announce. <laughs> okay. So again, Isaiah 14:12. Why art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? The inverted pentagram versus the pentagram. The pentagram represents a star. First and foremost, the symbolism of the star picture is light and heat and all those other stuff. When you invert it, it's now a falling star. That's why they talk about Venus. Why art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer. That's the name for Venus in Latin. That's why it's in the Bibles. In Isaiah. It's not the Hebrew word. Halalel. Halalel. <laughs> Something like that. The H and the two L's. Hi is what the Hebrew text has. And so what we have in our King James Version is from the Latin word put into this passage. And so understand that. Now Lucifer means bringer of light, light bearer. And attached to Lucifer, or Venus, she's the goddess of love, sexual love. And I went over this in another video explaining the symbolism um, but this is directly for why the church uses it and so Venus she's a Greek goddess the Greeks became dominant with Alexander the Great in 300 BCE and so that's how long the Greeks became known and had previously had the goddess prior to becoming a big major world power under Alexander. And so remember Paleo-Greek that I've been referring to uh, is much older than 300 BCE. <coughs> so first and foremost you got to identify the symbol. And we've done that. The pentagram is the star. Regular star in the heaven. When you invert it, it means a falling star. So how do you draw a shooting star? Which is a an asteroid entering the atmosphere becoming a meteorite. You invert it. simple, not complicated. It's the Bible that triggered the Church of Lucifer to adopt that sign of the inverted pentagram long before 1848 with that Catholic um, deacon. So first and foremost understand that. Now I'm going to put up another picture, as we'll do this in segments for you, and we'll talk about the picture.
Okay, notice this is the Christian cross, but it's inverted. And somebody had decorated it with inverted pentagrams also, uh, encapsulated in a circle for a shield of the inverted pentagram, rather than this one, which is the Magan, uh, the shield of David. Star of David being the inner portion of the two Daleths. And so, uh, how many of you are, recall the manner in which the apostles died? Recall Peter. How did he die? He was nailed to a cross like Jesus. But the legend says that he refused to be nailed like Jesus and demanded he be inverted, crucified upside down. That's why Satanists used the symbol of the cross of the crucified Jesus inverted. This is a satanic symbol, again because of Christianity. You're going to call it this, we're going to invert it and call it this for our God. This is how it was done, and it was long before the French Catholic deacon. Dumbasses. <clears throat> okay, so now we need to go over the symbolism uh, of the pentagram. Okay, as you'll notice from the picture, the symbolisms for each point refer to the five senses of humanity, of mankind, of men. Uh, if it were a pentagram, the spirit is on top. Remember, the Bible says that God is spirit. That's why God is at top of the star for the pentagram in the symbolic nature of uh, what people have attached to this. And so then you'd have uh, air and water as the outliers, and then fire and earth as the ones at the base. This goes back to the the Egyptians. I had somebody comment because again if I don't comment on every single detail in each and every single video I always without fail have somebody come at me for not mentioning one of the many details that I need to include in each and every single video case in point background noise of the vehicles going by because of the open window so I can breathe because of the air unit because of my landlord tried to murder me and so I got the air conditioners that you hear, which causes the noise problem. <laughs> so please, understand, I can't repeat this all over every single video. So just be nice. I'm not in a studio. I'm not a professional doing professional video entertainment for you. This is just me, as a human being, trying to warn you of the danger of the destruction of our nation. So it originates with the Egyptians. Because in the Egyptian creation, you have God. And he creates Shu and Tefnut. Atom is the God. And so Shu is air. Tefnut is moisture. And so when you read chapter 2 of Genesis, you see both of those characters being mentioned as God breathes life into Adam after the rain, moisture, uh, makes clay out of the soil. And so yes, you have earth and fire, which are earth elements. 
there on the bottom with the regular pentagram. That follows the Egyptians. That's why it's referred to as pagan in that first picture I showed you. Um, it says neo-pagan, but uh, that's because neo-pagans are getting accused of being Satanists. And so the person who did that picture wanted to clarify between Satanists and neo-pagans. But it's a pagan symbol, not a neo-pagan symbol. And these are where it goes back to, is the Egyptians. And uh, the association for each of the five points. And so for the Egyptians, the number five was also significant. Alright, so when it's inverted, as you see here, now you have earth and fire as the focus. Mortality is now the focus, not the spirit. They're turning away from God, and they're focusing on earth. The things of this world, mortality, carnality, the pleasures of the senses, sight, smell, uh, taste, uh, and speech, uh, and touch, and uh, hearing. <laughs> got head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Uh, and then the spirit is the sixth sense. Okay. Uh, that's often portrayed in the symbol of the eye. Alright, so let's go to the next symbolism for Satanists. Oops. Wrong. Alright, now here is a an amulet uh, from Luciferians. It's drawn in this particular case. You'll notice the Aramaic script around the outer circle. Uh, Yod, uh, on the one on the right, on the upper right, Yod, and then it would be the Wa, Lamed, Zion, Tau. Uh, and then on the other one with the pentagram, uh, it looks like it's got the It looks like that one's the He, and then Yod, and then that one is the Ket, and then the Wa, and then the Shin, or Sin, at the top, which looks like it's a crown on his head, doesn't it? Uh, it's actually the water symbol that I talked about in my Samson videos. Again, don't ask me to find where it is. Uh, but uh, it's on the top of his head, a water symbol at the top of his head uh, being used as a crown uh, in this particular case. That means he's a priest. And so Adam, as you can see there, split up between his head, is a priest, crowned as a priest, and then Eve is on the bottom. Adam on the top, Eve on the bottom. And uh, if you remember the story of Lilith, uh, she wanted to be on top. And so they have sort of misunderstood the Jewish mystical uh, story <coughs> by Alphabet Ben Sira as they put Samael above Lilith. And so they're contrasting. Uh, they're saying that Adam is to Lilith as Samael is to Lilith. Did I say Lilith for Eve? <laughs> Adam is to Eve as Samael is to Lilith. And notice instead of Adam, it's now the goat beast. Uh, that's been... Again, that refers to the Bible where Jesus says, my sheep will be on my right and the goats on the left. 
So there we have Adam, mankind, the sheep, and that's why Mormons are referred to as sheep, <laughs> because sheep are dumb. <laughs> and the goats are on the left side there, even though we're facing it and it's on the right. And so this is important to understand that they're, they're taking this information from the Bible just as Jewish mysticism did, but they are turning it to have God as Lucifer instead of Yahweh. Alright, let's get to the next thing then. This is Joseph Smith Sr.'s Holiness to the Lord parchment. This is a star chart, as I've previously explained. Explained. Notice the inverted, uh, not the inverted, the pentagrams in the four corners of the parchment. It's a star chart. Joseph Sr. in Vermont joined the New Israelites. The New Israelites taught him about Jewish mysticism. And uh, he learned how to interpret the signs in the heavens and about the tree of life. Remember from uh, Joseph Sr., we have him talking about several dreams he had as he moves to Massachusetts and, and so on, he has several dreams about the tree of life. This is an indication that he has been taught Jewish mysticism, because Jewish mysticism has the tree of life. Let me stop and show the picture of that. If you want to learn about Jewish mysticism as taught to Joseph Smith Sr. and uh, the different uh, techniques that are utilized in it, as well as the Tree of Life, Mormon, Joel Sampson, written by the finger of God, goes into great detail uh, all about the different techniques and how the Book of Mormon, specifically, in the 116 pages that were lost <laughs> by Martin Harris's wife, although Martin Harris is referred to as the wicked man instead, <clears throat> uh, talks about the tree of life. Not a coincidence, came from his dreams, uh, because they needed to replace the 116 pages <laughs> that Joseph Jr. lost and so they had to rewrite it and uh, move Joseph out of Harmony over to Susquehanna uh, to uh, fix the error. <laughs> Man, you read verse or section three of the Doctrine and Covenants, and you just see Joseph Senior is pissed. <laughs> I mean, this is the fate of the United States. This isn't something to trifle with. You don't lose something that is potentially going to save mankind. Uh, and so, yeah, even though he lost his son, uh, Joseph, uh, and got banned from the Methodists, uh, Joseph still had a responsibility uh, to play a part in saving America. And he blew it. And so he lost his gift of translation for a period of time until they could get Sidney Rigdon to uh, work on the book instead from the Solomon Spalding manuscript and blah blah blah. And so, uh, but understand, the Smiths were not into occult, which is Satanism. They were into Jewish mysticism. They were also Congregationalists, that's what the New Israelites were, were a version of, new, of Congregationalists. So 
of the Cowdries, for example, when Nathaniel Wood had the wood scrape incident and the church was disbanded and he was ran out of town, the Cowdries went back to their Congregationalist church that they had had before Nathaniel. And uh, uh, the Smiths went on to move to Massachusetts and whatever. And so uh, then the Smiths came back to Vermont and then they moved to Palmyra. And after they'd moved to Palmyra, that's when Ethan, uh, what was his name? Uh, the he View of the Hebrews. Uh, bugging me now. <laughs> the delay of the video. View of the Hebrews. Ethan Smith, of course. <clears throat> and so Ethan Smith wrote View of the Hebrews uh, after the Smiths left Vermont the second time for Palmyra and the Cowdries were still in that congregation that Ethan Smith came to be the pastor of. But it was not plagiarized in the Book of Mormon. The Tanners said, oh, it, yeah, no, yeah, I plagiarized. No. And, and other books, yes, not view of the Hebrews. Um, there's ways to identify plagiarism, and all our school teachers had educated us on not to be plagiaristic in our Word in our documentations. And so uh, that's how you identify plagiarism and what's not plagiarism. Okay, so now let's go to the temples then. This is the reconstructed Nauvoo temple. First one was burned down, and they believe Brigham Young had a hand in burning it down as he was unable to sell it to anybody and get money from it. <coughs> it was dedicated on the anniversary of the Illuminati, who embraced the symbol of Lucifer with the inverted pentagram, long before that pre-Catholic deacon. And uh, Mormons were upset with this because he, the building was built, ready to be dedicated, ready to be used on the 6th of April, 1846. But he waited purposely to dedicate it on the anniversary of the Illuminati on the 1st of May, 1846. And so Alpheus Cutler said, no, oh, that's it. You lost me. Uh, Joseph Smith did tell me that I had to wait for a certain sign in the heavens, so I'm going to wait for that sign. Have fun in Utah. <laughs> Obviously it was not Utah. It was Salt Lake. And it was Mexico territory, not the United States. And so, yes, this was designed built and dedicated after the death of Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith had nothing to do with this temple. He did say we need to build a temple here, but he, it didn't get started until after he died. They, uh, it was Hiram, I believe, who broke ground. Uh, they may have broken ground during his lifetime. Uh, but uh, it was not completed until 1846. <coughs> and so, of course, Brigham Young accuses Joseph Smith of everything that's evil, everything that's contrary to what Joseph Smith was known for. So polygamy. Joseph Smith constantly denounced polygamy. And yet, Brigham Young, once Joseph was gone, Oh, yeah, Joseph, oh, it was in secret. That's what he had planned. He had a revelation. Oh, look at this revelation that we found. And we'll put in the year before I die. They blame Joseph for lots of things, just as the Danites, of whom Brigham Young converted, were 
causing criminal mischief uh, everywhere they went, but Joseph was getting in trouble for it. And so, yes, understand that Lucifer is not a good guy. Those who follow Lucifer are not good guys. They're not just the bad guy from that new star celebrity who's put on hold now with the coronavirus. <coughs> and so understand, this is the origin of the threat to America, is the Illuminati, who embraced the symbol of Lucifer, whom Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball were a part of the Scottish Rites Masons that were infiltrated by the Illuminati. Their plan was to infiltrate positions of power in the United States, rise up in popularity, and then take over leadership, and then take over the United States. <coughs> and so, uh, uh, I'll, and that's what it, they did to Joseph Smith. Once they find out, found out that the Smiths were involved in stopping them in 1826, they followed that same pattern. They infiltrated Joseph's organization, and Joseph sort of invited them in with the, the missionary work for the Book of Mormon. Hey, we've got this new organization. Here's the book. Join us. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, we're joining you all right. And then in 1838, they had risen to popularity sufficiently that they took over leadership. That's why I call it the leadership crisis. All hell broke loose that year, as Joseph was again arrested, and they took advantage of his being arrested that year. That's where Thomas B. Marsh, his wife, gets blamed for milk thing, rather than the Danites chasing Thomas B. Marsh out, and uh, William Smith and all that. I've done that in the histories, and so uh, this is, and then they murdered Joseph eventually and took over the organization, just what they planned to do with the United States. So it's the same pattern. It works, so they keep using it. So let me show you, uh, what was I gonna show you? I'll figure it out and put it up. I figured it out which picture, uh, and, uh, and it goes into the next segment. Uh, the Seagull Gate. Uh, it's at the corner of Temple Square on State Street. And you can see from the picture that straight ahead, pointing at it, is the state capital of Utah. Just as on the Salt Lake Temple, above the entrance door to the Salt Lake Temple is the inverted pentagram pointing at the doors to enter into the temple pointing at the state capitol, pointing at the door to the temple, pointing at the White House in the roads in Washington, D.C. And it's the Scottish Rites Temple that's up and the one on the right, which, um, I'm, no, don't worry about it. But yeah, it's the Scottish Rites that are involved there in Washington, D.C with the inverted pentagram because they were infiltrated by the Illuminati. And so uh, this is their sign to all of their secret brethren around the world. We have control of Washington, D.C. We have control of the White House. We have control of the religion that stopped us in 1826 and we now control the religion here in what's now Utah. We control the government of Utah. We are the religion. And so government and religion conquered, ready to go for the destruction of America in the future time period that the Smiths wrote the Book of Mormon to warn us about. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, I got a picture of the Logan Temple. Uh, I couldn't find close-ups or couldn't identify from the Salt Lake City versus Logan Temple close-ups to know which one was which. Uh, so I'm just going to trust those apologists on the LDS blog thing that the Logan Temple does have them, like the Salt Lake Temple. Uh, they're apologizing, so they must know which to apologize for, right? <laughs> and so, uh, it doesn't surprise me that Logan would also have it. Uh, I am kind of surprised if St. George didn't have it, because uh, Brigham Young was still around for St. George, as uh, he was the one who uh, uh, wrote the temple text to be used at St. George first, I believe. Let's pull up the history of St. George Temple. St. George of the U.S. Temple. Alright. Uh, Open 77. Uh, so, yeah, it was right before Brigham Young died, wasn't it? When did Brigham Young die? Brigham Young uh, died August 29th, 77. Yeah, so. Uh, right before Brigham Young died, he provided the temple text for the whole endowment that he created. Remember, Joseph had nothing to do with any of that extra stuff in the endowment. None of the signs and covenants and tokens and handshakes. For Joseph, it was just washing and anointing to become Christ. That was it. That was all. King. That's what Christ is. And so notice, April 6th, <laughs> he had to still placate the Mormons um, with the dedication of the temples. Um, and so let's check Logan real quick. Uh, May 17th, <gasps> 1884. This was not Brigham Young. Those knuckleheads, they said this was uh, by Joseph, and I assumed Brigham Young, and that they were wrong about Joseph, but not only was were they wrong about Joseph, they were wrong about Brigham. This is 1884. Dear God. All right. Unbelievable. Does it even have the inverted pentagrams, or was it just St. George? Instead, uh, here's the architect. Uh, he was the official architect of the LDS Church, brother-in-law to Brigham Young. Uh -huh. And of course came with the Danites in 1847 into the valley. So he was one of the Danites. And so any temple that he designed, let's find out which temples he designed. So yeah, if he designed the Logan Temple, uh, then he designed all the others that were a part of that. So he designed the St. George Temple, the Utah Territorial State House, the Beehive House, the Lion House. <gasps> I did those in the Samson video. We, I have conf confirmation now that they purposely built them for the symbolism with Samson. And the Salt Lake Temple, he designed that too. So, yep. I don't see Logan in here. Uh, Nauvoo Temple, he designed that? Oh. Oh. After the dedication of Nauvoo Temple, well, let's see. Angel went to work on the Nauvoo Temple. Yep, it's him. This, this guy. Angel Truman O. Angel. He's the designer for the inverted pentagram. On the Nauvoo Temple, Salt Lake Temple, 
Uh, I wonder if the Lion House and the Beehive House have inverted pentagrams somewhere. Uh, that's interesting. The Salt Lake Tabernacle. <laughs> St. George Temple and whatever this Utah Territorial State House is. Uh, let's click on it and find out. Uh, oh, that's across the street from the Capitol. Official uh, State Park Museum. It is a state park in Fillmore, Fillmore, Utah. And then that's not the one. So government. No, state laws were initially intended as the larger structure. The Utah Territorial State House, officially Territorial State Park Museum, is a state park in Fillmore, Utah. No, that's not the one that I'm thinking of. It's now a museum across from the state capitol. But yeah, this is this is the man of evil. Let me get his picture, and uh, we'll put him in here for this video. The architect of evil. <laughs> and let's see that file. Okay. So there, that's. Learning along with you guys here. Okay, so now we know the origin of the architect. But uh, uh, I, we're, I think we're done now. Uh, so let me just uh, uh, close with the, the purpose or the significance of this. In the Book of Mormon, we learn about the great and abominable church. We learn that it is led by the devil, Lucifer. In selections from the Book of Moses, in chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, we learn Lucifer's plan of happiness. We're unique as a religion for that, uh, in that we believe in a pre-mortal council in heaven where Lucifer stood up to oppose God's plan of happiness with a plan to take away agency. And when you identify the church's actions, the government of Utah's actions, Mormons' actions, Parents, Mormon parents, actions, it's all designed around taking away agency, controlling other people's lives, adding hedge laws around the commandments to love, adding covenants of loyalty oaths to the leaders of the church. And the secret handshakes and all of the works of crime. Secret works of darkness? Crimes. The extortion, the threats, the theft, uh, the murders. All of these are part and parcel of the Mormons. Taught to them by their leaders. I experienced it from my youth from my parents right away. My parents were trying to take away my agency. It wasn't that they were concerned that I was going to touch the stove and burn myself. No, it was, we disapprove of you watching too much television. We want you to get to work around the house. And it wasn't to train me how to do housework so that when I live on my own, I'll know how to do it. It was they wanted a slave. That's the difference. They disapproved of what I was doing, which they led me to do. I told you about how when I was uh, had turned one, my brother was born, and uh, he had colic. And so my mom couldn't take care of me because she was constantly with Todd. And so she sat me in front of the TV. Sesame Street was on during that time, so TV became my educational tool. That's why I was taught, oh, okay, TV. 
This is where I'm supposed to learn about being a mortal. And so I spent eight to ten hours a day as a kid watching TV during school days. Not just in the summertime. Summertime they didn't have the regular scheduled TV. So it was all reruns and no, so baseball. Uh, but uh, uh, and Boy Scouts. And so because I was told to do that kind of lifestyle, I was doing that kind of lifestyle. But then my parents then attacked me and said, we disapprove of this lifestyle. <laughs> Get to work around the house. And I rebelled and I win. And I got to watch my eight to ten hours of TV a day, despite their release society telling my mom, this is how you control your kids on the amount of time they watch TV. We have this fancy wheel and you can adjust it. To <laughs> they came home with that and then, ah, that. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's the church. They control our lives. And not for our betterment. To be better people. Like the Boy Scouts was trying to train me to be. You know. The different merit badges were training me for adulthood. But my parents, the church, no. They were calling me sinners constantly. That I was wicked, that I needed to change, and they were the ones who were to change me as they needed to take control of my life and tell me what to do on a regular basis. Mormons know the scripture about not being compelled in all things. That you're supposed to have communion with the Spirit to help guide you in your life. That you don't follow every single word and wait for every single word to come out of the president of the church. And yet, that's what the church does. They say, I am the prophet, obey me. And so Mormons wait to be compelled in all things. In case in point, the end of the world. Armageddon, the latter days. Mormons are waiting to act in the latter days. Whereas if they had a true prophet, the true prophet would have prepared the church and Mormons before this day, rather than betraying us and abandoning us. And now, as the coronavirus is at its peak, he's opening up the church again. Thank God I don't think they had church services in my stake. I still see the sign up on the doors. It was still up this morning when I went running, I think. Did I not check? I just, it's been so long, maybe I took it for granted, but I'm pretty sure it was still up. Should I take a note and try to remember for tomorrow morning? I'm not going now, it's time for bed. Uh, but uh, it's going to take too, uh, too long to do this video. Um, maybe I'll upload this tomorrow. And so, I'll do that, and I'll check, and I'll make a note somehow, some way with this video. Uh, is sign still up? Okay. And so, yeah, we know Lucifer's tactics. Pacification, flattery, deception. We know from... Uh, the Doctrine and Covenants from section 121 many are called but few are frozen. chosen why are they not chosen? because they are carnally minded instead of spiritually minded is eternal life smile don't invert it smile spiritually minded is eternal life is life eternal Uh, that's from uh, the Book of Mormon, uh, 
somebody else pointed it out to me, so I'm not the one who came up with this, or who found it. Uh, yeah. I've forgotten what it is. A spiritually minded is life eternal. There's two places. <laughs> uh, remember to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. Second Nephi 939 uh, yeah, the other one is not. It's separate. So that's where it is. It's an acronym for SMILE. Spiritual minded is life eternal. Uh, but Mo, uh, King Benjamin, talking to the people, uh, that uh, not to be carnal minded. And uh, that uh, to be... Uh, wise is good as long as you hearken unto the counsels of God. If you get proud and think that you're better than the God and the Spirit, uh, you're left to yourself. And, uh, that's Lucifer's doctrine. That's why it's inverted. Is Spirit is on the bottom and mortality is on top now as the horns. And so we know this as Mormons. We know Lucifer's playbook. And yet still, we get deceived. We got punked by the church because of the plan of takeover that has worked for them so well for so long. So they keep reusing that same pattern over and over and over again because it works. It's working, Utah. So please understand, the church is the church of the devil. Don't let apologists, don't let them deceive you. Don't let the leaders deceive you. Because this is our lives on the line. Oops, that's the wrong button. 